Have you ever wondered what kind of cereal Bill Gates prefers? Have you ever wondered if Melinda Gates can dance the whip in the nine nine? We'll find out the answers to those questions and more on our new segment for Bobcat Broadcast. We are here today with Mr. and Mrs. Gates from the Gates Foundation. So thank you guys for being here with us today and I just want to ask you a few questions. So why or how did you come to Batesy Learn High School? Well, we came to Kentucky because we wanted to see about all of the amazing education reform that's going on in the state that we've read a lot about and, and the foundations participated in. And then we heard about the just incredible results that Betsy Lane is having and how amazing the school is. And so we wanted to learn how that's been possible, both from the teachers and the students' perspective. And what did you come to find? Well, it's amazing to see the positive energy here, uh, the pride, the the way the teachers help each other. You know, a rural school, you think, okay, they're not gonna have AP classes, you know, maybe they've lowered some of the standards somewhat, but you know, here they're just pushing, uh, got more kids in AP class, uh, really trying to help all the kids. Talked a lot with the special education teachers about uh, some neat things they do about keeping those kids as integrated as possible, and it's pretty uplifting to see what a, a supportive community it is. Why are you so focused on changing education? Well, education is just the fundamental thing that lets people live whatever life they want to live. It opens up all their opportunities and possibilities. So whether you want to be a poet, or you want to be in business, or you want to be in computer science, whatever it is, a doctor, you really need a great education to participate in society. And so we want to make sure that all kids around the U.S. have a high quality education. And quite honestly, being at Betsy Lane, if I could lift Betsy Lane up and make every high school around the nation do what's going on inside this building, we would get there. Every kid has the possibility of learning. You all know that being in, in this school environment. And we ought to make sure that all middle schools, high schools, elementary schools give every kid that possibility. You, uh, you said your motto is that all lives are created equal. And how do you plan on creating equality in education? Well, the key thing is, is having great teachers. And so how do you help teachers learn from each other? You know, there are clearly some phenomenal teachers, including some that uh, we just met with. And so how can they share the way they make this subject interesting, the way they take a kid who's discouraged and says, okay, I'm not good at math, draw that kid in, give them a little bit of success, a, a, a sense of possibility. And if you have all great teachers, then you really will achieve your potential. You'll have a, a, you know, a very positive sense of what you can do. A lot of the, the tougher schools, particularly some of the inner city schools, just getting the classroom calm, getting people to have a sense of why are they at school, uh, it's very tough. And so the U.S. actually has a fairly high dropout rate. Uh, you know, uh, some of the inner city schools have over 30%. For black males, it's often over 50%. And that really is a, a tough thing. It's, it's very tough for the individual, and it's bad for the, the country because that's all this uh, potential that we're not able to take advantage of. You mentioned that it would be easier with a great teacher. What are some characteristics of a great teacher, do you believe? Well, a great teacher really draws the kids in and helps show them their potential, helps show them that they can learn, believes in the kids, but and holds them to very high expectations. And that was one of the things I was so excited about hearing from the teachers here. They said, we don't lower the expectations for some kids and say, well, these kids can learn, but these can't. They say, they say to us, all kids can learn, all kids can go on to college or into career if they choose. And so we're gonna hold them to the, that high expectation. And if they get to a certain point and they're starting to drop back, we surround them and figure out what it is, why are they struggling on this? And we make sure that they learn it. They get the special surrounding circumstances they need and they keep up with the class. That's what great teaching looks like. Great teaching also means, and again, we saw this meeting with your teachers here, is they are lifelong learners and they are learning their craft of their teaching and always asking themselves, how can I get better? They're going to other teachers and saying, what, what strategy did you use to engage the kids? What's, what are you trying in your classroom? One of the teachers here who's been teaching her over 18 years says she goes home at night and learns on Khan Academy new things that she wants to learn to be able to bring into the classroom. That's incredible role modeling and that's an incredible set of teachers who really care about kids and they are so dedicated to you all, it's really amazing. What do you think students could do to get involved in improving education? Well, one of the things in this uh, 
growth system uh, is where the students do get surveyed and the students are asked uh, to provide feedback. Uh, and we saw in Mr. Thacker's classroom, even at the end of that class, they were kind of writing down, you know, how was this lesson good? What might we have done differently? And, you know, say so I did trying to find out if the kids aren't engaged, what is it? Uh, you know, how do you draw them in? And a lot of the improved teaching here is about uh, students not just sitting there as much and having it be more of an interactive discussion. And so, you know, kids should speak up. You know, they should reinforce with teachers do things well. It'd be nice for the teacher uh, to hear about that and making sure uh, people understand when it's not connecting, why not? So we're going to play a little game of rapid fire questions. You have a few seconds to answer each question, and if you don't have an answer, you can just say pass. Okay. okay. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. What's your favorite place to visit? Uh, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sydney, Australia. Uh, <laughs> if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, more time. More energy. <laughs> What's your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, I guess Cocoa Puffs. You should say pass. He doesn't eat breakfast. <laughs> no, but I, I, I like Cocoa Puffs. Favorite breakfast cereal? Um, I guess Wheat Chex. If you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, hamburger. Mexican food. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you were stuck on a deserted island and it could only have one item, what would it be? Uh, internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my best friend. <laughs> if you could describe yourself using an animal, what animal would it be? Uh, uh, Bonobo. <laughs> a white leopard. <laughs> Who would you want to play you in the movie of your life? Uh, well, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Do you know what the whip and the nine nine is? I think so. No, I must not. <laughs> yes. I, I've heard of it, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a daughter who's 13. She tried to teach it to me. She says, I'm pathetic. <laughs> Can you show us it? No. <laughs> no. She would be so embarrassed that we would never be able to show this video anywhere. <laughs> Although I hear your teachers are really good at it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for being with us. And that is a wrap. This has been your Bobcat Broadcast. Until next time.